Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is August the 2nd of 2023, and good morning to you. I have a nice, nice hot cup of coffee right here. I have my copy of the Word of God open to the book of 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 4. Please join us there. Um, you are already turning in your Bible so that you can follow along with us, and as you do that, Let's turn our attention to the bad dad joke. Why couldn't the sesame seed leave the casino? Why couldn't the sesame seed leave the casino? Because he was on a roll. We'll put that aside, and just to be clear, I despise casinos, um, and there are better places to spend your time and your money um, all over the place. So anyway, we are in First Corinth, Second Corinthians, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter 4. Um, your Bible is open to that passage, and tonight, tonight is prayer meeting night. We have the opportunity to meet together as a church as we continue our study in the book of 1 John and then turn our attention to prayer. And we would encourage you, if you are in our area, anywhere near our area, we would certainly encourage you to join us and share that time of fellowship, time of study, time of prayer with the congregation. So we are getting very close to that nine o'clock hour, and so we're going to go ahead, we're going to bow our heads, bow our hearts before our Heavenly Father, ask His blessing upon His Word, upon this day, and upon each one of you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, good morning again. You have given us a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful day. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that this day is going to hold. And Father, of course, you are already there in all of the circumstances, knowing full well what is going to await us throughout this day. And Father, again, we thank you. We praise you for these truths. Father, as we come into your presence, we again want to ask your blessing upon each and every one that joins us. Father, as we've already noted, you know what the day holds. In fact, not just for me, not just for my wife, but for every one of us, you know what the day is. And so, Father, encourage your people through this day. Use your people through this day. Provide for your people. Father, you know our limitations. You know our challenges. You know the temptations. And so, Father, I pray that you would indeed encourage and strengthen your people today. We pray that as a people, we would be faithful to you, that that would be first and foremost on our agendas, is to do your will. And Father, help us to focus on your will. Even what we call interruptions can be blessings and opportunities. And so Father, keep our eyes open Help us to speak a fitting word that would be used to encourage and uplift our fellow believers. Help us to speak an encouraging word that would direct an unbeliever to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that our lives might count for eternity, that you would use us to change the eternal destiny of people around us. And again, not that we can save anyone, but we certainly can direct people to Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Father, again, use us. 
as we have the opportunity to open up your word. Father, again, use it in our hearts and lives. Help us to be everything you would have us to be. Father, we thank you, we praise you for this opportunity and for each one that joins us today. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling of the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound unto the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let me, and again, there's so many passages that we could look at in this, pa in this chapter. We can look at the fact that we bear these things in earthen vessels that are wearing down every day. But verse 7 says this, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Why? That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Beloved, we can pursue the will of God. We can seek to serve God. But in regards to these things, we are unworthy. We are incapable. We are weak. Why? So that God works in and through our weaknesses in order that he might show forth his strength and his glory. Beloved, in the strength and glory of God, be faithful.
Be faithful to him in everything you do, say, and think. Never allowing yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, I trust you're going to have a super, super day. I pray that you have nothing but God's best upon your life. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And God bless you.